Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nur Atika Binti Shafwan. I'm third year student in Bachelor of Quantity Surveying at University of Technology, Malaysia. So, in this video, I'm going to explain about what are the steps to prepare interim payment and my opinion on how to further improvise the step. But before that, what is interim payment? Interim payment is an amount of money to be paid to the contractor regularly basis as provided in the contract for completed works and including the supply building materials and any other things available for consideration under the contract. The first step is Set the date agreed by both parties for the valuation of progress work. The second step is valuation method for general work, for example, initial payment, recurring payment, and final payment. The third step the works which are carried out under the contract will be paid to the contractor. The first step is material on site, paid up to 90% of valuation on material on site stated in the document. The fifth step is the valuations work must include the valuation works. The sixth step is valuation of the price must be made using the method according to the provision made in the contract. Step 7. The SO under condition the amount must not be more than the invoice. Step 8 is the government make a direct payment to the nominated subcontractor. Step 9 is within 14 days after the valuation, SO shall issue interim certificate. And the last step. Within the amount of time stated in the appendix on COC, the government should make a payment to the contractor. The first step is, contractor should submit interim claim with complete details and particular required. Second step is, the valuation must be made by the QS. Step 3. Within 12 days, the architect should issue any interim certificate to the employer and a copy to the contractor. The fourth step is, the employee should thereafter pay the amount certified to the contractor within the period of honouring certificate. And the last step is, any failure by the contractor to submit payment application may let architect not to issue an interim certificate. My opinion on how to further improvise the step. My first opinion, when the day of valuation works, not only QS should be involved, but architect, clerk of architect, clerk of engineer, and representative of the contractor must be involved in the valuation works. My second opinion, after the valuation have been made, QS must include calculation to prove the percentage of work done paid to the contractor accurately. My last opinion, during the preparation of interim certificate, it should be reviewed by the third party or client representative to reduce the rate of arithmetic error of the payment.